There he is, burning them out because he hasn't moved. He hasn't lifted enough Not rocks really. today. <laughs> My arm could be twisted either way. Not after you did those chin ups. I don't think you'd twist them. <laughs> Hey guys, it's uh, Monday morning and I've got kind of this glow on my face because it is our first outdoor project of the year. This is a project started last year and weather told us you need to stop. So we're back here today. I haven't seen it since last year. I have no idea what to expect, but check it out. Machines are here. I've even got some shiny new boots. I always like starting off the year with a new pair of boots. Not really, but my other boots were left in Florida. So I got new boots and I got my car coffee sitting right there all the essentials of a perfect day all right so this is where all the stone and everything has to come through this is the biggest challenge of this project this is the only access in and out and I know we have to get a lot of dirt out of here today oh my gosh um yeah it's a little sticky probably should have put my boots on first holy cow I see Ed's got the clean out pump in there oh my gosh all right, so last year we left it. We got our aqua blocks in, our reservoir in. There's our two pump vaults over there. All of that dirt has to come out. A waterfall is going to go way over in there. A bog filter is going to go over in here. All of this water that's in here, every drop of it is from Mother Nature. So we've got to drain this. I can see primer floating buckets <laughs> sitting there, fittings. We've just got to clean today, it looks like. Here's what I know. I still have the smile on my face because it's uh it's our first day and it's gonna be fun even if this is all we got to do is just clean everything up ed what was your impression first walking back here actually not as bad as i thought yeah <laughs> we got to drain it clean it's been, it's been sitting for five months last november a lot of snow came in so yeah actually i was a little bit worried about that reservoir that thing didn't pop up thankfully i was thinking the worst on that that groundwater is going to get under there conditions are Kind of what I anticipated. It's muddy, he's got, it's mucky. He's got appropriate footwear. <laughs> See me? Yeah. Bad. Yeah, that is that is not good. appropriate. Bad. <laughs> it's good. Be out here. <laughs> so we just got to drain all this water out and get that dirt out of here. It was not designed to be a swim pond yep. originally, and so now we're gonna design it as a swim pond. It's big enough, it's deep enough, it's gonna have enough filtration. I mean, just a few modifications. Yeah, we'll get some of those new jets yeah. in there and some of that other stuff. And it'll be awesome. Yeah. All right, switch the shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Brian bringing the machine back. We're gonna start fixing up this roadway to grade that out, compact it, create a little bit of a roadway over in here, protect up that uh, little patio area, get access over to that pile for tomorrow. What we'll do is we'll start setting these rocks down here in our reservoir to try to get that stuff done. We will also try to get any other excavation completed today so uh, we could remove that soil as well. So I just left the job site. I came over to pick out some more of the rock for our project. We are gonna be installing some of this beautiful moss rock over here so this is a sandstone based stone that fractures relatively easily but it's a really cool stone it blends easily with our granite boulders it's not quite angular as like the weathered limestone which is over here which is more big flat slabs and everything this stuff you do get fractured busted pieces but they also get a little bit more rounded type of a character which is kind of what we're looking for we're trying to blend some of that stuff together i'm going to grab some of these guys right over in here really nice selection and it looks like they got some smaller stuff over there so we finished cleaning up everything down on the bottom we had our stone delivery arrive and we are doing that little staircase that's coming in from this edge we had to dig this out remove those rocks to create a little bit of that landing and drop that stuff yeah, in we're trying to get yeah, this stepway to kind of go in back behind here so it's definitely easier to do this right at the very beginning of construction versus making this change but this is something that the uh, customer decided to do after learning about the recreation pond coming in with an access area would it like I said been a lot easier to do it in the beginning but this is uh, part of the modification you can see these uh, stone steps down here on the bottom trying to make it twist and turn a little bit carving into that edge just to make it fit properly nice thing about having the liner versus coming in with a concrete system our liner 
liner comes way past everywhere. We always oversize it. You can see going all the way around. The reason that we do that is that gives us a lot of design flexibility. We can pull the liner in, we could excavate, we can backfill inside of it versus a lot of other systems. If you come in with a concrete shell or to make a change like this would literally be impossible. So this has given us a huge benefit. We're gonna drop in a beautiful rock. It's actually that rock back over here just to anchor down the steps. So we're gonna have that staircase kind of coming in right over in here. Big rock anchoring in that. So design flexibility, key. Big boulder going in. That has been excavated out. Put the liner back in place. Put a piece of that rock padding in there. And now we're coming in with that big boulder to set it right in between around those stairs to make a really neat entry point. One of the challenges on this project is we are landlocked. Everything has to come through this one little corner. We don't have a skid steer. We only have the excavator. We do have our dingo, but the dingo is not powerful enough to lift up these pallets. So what we're trying to do is we're going to grab this one. Hayden just strap that up. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab it with the 308 over here. So we have straps going around the entire pallet and we're going to try to lift that entire thing up, bring it over and stage it somewhere over there so we could utilize that rock. So let's see if this is strong enough. That is about two tons, I believe is what it said. Oh, be careful on that side if that thing wants to collapse, which it looks like it's totally going to buckle. But we got it. Nice. Yeah, we went around it the right way, otherwise it would have crushed it differently. All right, now position it so we could get access to all that stone. And then we're gonna use this stuff down along that other edge. So we are moving, drop in those big rocks really fast. It's the beauty about working with some of these bigger stones, it can go quickly. We got some nice big chunks. And we gotta go get some fabric for underneath these guys. But look at this beautiful stone, all moss covered. Awesome. So we are digging back where the area where the overflow is going to be. So this entire pond is going to fill up with water. We have a waterfall there. Wetland located here. So all that water is flowing down. Jets down on the bottom. All that water is going to continue flowing. It's going to overflow through kind of a negative edge effect. And it's going to drop into a stream. Go underneath where the machine is at. Into our reservoir over there. So it's a wrap for today. 100% chance of rain tomorrow. Regraded that area over on top. Still gotta get that soil out of here. Until then, cover it back up with that liner to, to protect it. Brian is just trying to clean up some of that stuff, grade things away so everything will pitch and drain better. Had a productive day. Love these steps. We finished up that stuff. Dropped in a few of these big boulders over in here. We got that back section done. We started putting in all that little stuff. Our next step is to continue going along this back edge over in here. And then we're gonna probably work our way this way put in some of those big frame rocks and everything and get that waterfall going and then just keep working our way back around this back corner we still have to dig out the wetland area which is going to go right up in this section that won't happen until next week probably at this point finish grading move some of this plywood try to protect up this stuff so we're not dealing with as much muck and mud after the rainstorm we are back out on our project we probably have a 40 degree change in weather today i want to show you a little bit of what we're working on right now you can see this is our 3000 gallon reservoir over here so this is where the pumps are going to be located this is a negative edge so what that means is all the water from this entire pond is gonna flow over a stream bed back down into that reservoir. So in order to make this function from a hydraulic standpoint, we have to have double the amount of water that's in transit inside of our reservoir. So what I mean by that, the water in transit is gonna be that little bit of water, two inches, three inches of water that's gonna continue flowing when the pumps are turned off. So what's gonna happen is all the water from the waterfall, all the water from the wetland, all the water that's in the pond is gonna continue flowing by gravity over this little weir back down into the reservoir. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that we have enough capacity down over in that reservoir to hold all of that water. That's why we have a 3,000 gallon tank. The other thing that we're doing here, this was built basically as a rectangle. We're working with aqua blocks. It's very quick, it's very easy, it's very efficient to dig that reservoir out as a rectangle. Problem that we have here, is we have all these big rocks, it still looks like a rectangle. So what we're doing right now is we're dropping in some of these 
these other boulders on the, actually that one's not set. These ones over here, that's gonna be a little butt rock. We're trying to break up that flat straight edge. Ryan's digging out a little pocket. We're gonna set another flat rock so we can kind of bring that stonework out into the perimeter. That's one of the things that I think really makes a big, big, big difference when you're designing and building a water feature. The key is to make it blend into the surrounding landscape. Dropping in some of these bigger boulders. We placed in some of the hand-sized granite over here. We have that pile left over. So we're trying to utilize some of that. This big one here is gonna go on this opposite corner just to kind of break up that monotony. We don't wanna continue all that little granite all the way around, especially since we have all these big boulders. So what we're trying to do is strap this one. Our problem is for this project is access. We have one area that we could drive the machine around to. We're gonna to try to set that rock from that side. He's gonna reach all the way across, which is why we went over the back of the bucket. So you have a couple options. You can go off of the teeth with your strap. I hook over here where you could put a clevis in and do it like that, or you can just simply go over the back of the bucket with your strap and then go all the way down. This machine should be plenty size. He's gonna have to put his blade down over here just to kind of stabilize himself. But we wanna set that big rock right over here. Now the way that thing is strapped is what we call, uh, that's using a continuous loop strap. So it's basically just a big circle. And we loop it around the different corners and then we cinch it together kind of here in this middle part. So it creates a really nice stable position for the stone and it makes it relatively easy so we're gonna see what this looks like let's see if he has enough reach we need some rock pad on here Here's my padding in place one of the other things that we do during construction for stabilization you can see all these boulders are backfilled with river stone what that really does is kind of locks everything into position takes up all those void spaces and it creates a good bedding material for that next layer of stone the deeper the pond is the bigger the rocks the more critical that becomes so we were able to set the rock just bare what we're gonna try to do is find a chunk for back behind it and then we'll transition over to some of the granite again the rain is starting to pick up a little bit actually it's kind of a sleety sleety rain mixture coming in on us it's nice in here I don't know what you're talking about <laughs> we got rained out yesterday kind of made a little bit of a mess here but not too bad we had a lot of strong wind coming in last night which actually kind of dried things up this is where our negative edge is and what I mean by that is this entire pond the wetland filter the waterfall all this water is gonna move through this little joint over here down to our pumping system over on the other side. So what we're trying to do is we're setting these elevations. We would like to get a little bit of water coming over this. Probably have to bring this up just a little bit. We might shim that stuff up or do some little slate work on the back side of it. We have to make a seam right here though. So it's gonna take a little time. We're not gonna jump on that right now because we're still waiting on the dirt to be pulled out. Once the dirt's out, then we could seam this. We could worry about that stream. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna shift gears, start going this direction. Right now what Chris and Hayden are doing is they're carving into this little peninsula over here to drop in that massive boulder and looking at these rocks it's like a huge jigsaw puzzle i mean so you look at this thing you could set it a bunch of different ways but my thought right now and chris's as well is to have this at the top and set this up so if that's the top that means this is going to be like a big giant cantilever so that rock's going to set and it's going to kind of have that little bit of a cove type of an effect to it so this is going to be our face this point here is going to kind of be right over in here somewhere so we're going to try to come off of that spot in there to kind of create that edge and then we'll go backwards off of that into that little cove area now that we know how we want that rock to sit now what we have to do is we have to strap it you can see here it's buried in, into the soil we're gonna have to pull that out a little bit probably have Chris take the machine and actually stand that up a little bit or at very least kind of loosen that thing up so we can get a strap on it. I prefer working with these continuous loop straps. So these are super versatile, very, very strong. These two inch ones are great because they grip the rock. They kind of wrap around those corners and they really grab it. So the heavier the rock is, actually the tighter and tighter it actually grabs. All right, so we got it strapped up, continuous loops like I was saying. They're just barely going around that outside edge. We are pushing the limit of that machine because he's gonna have to set it out pretty far. You feel confident? there Chris? I feel really good. Confidence is key. It's going in. It's gonna look awesome. All right let's bring that thing around. It's always unsettling to go way over the top. Nice and smooth. I think we both agreed that we loved how this rock sat in here and the orientation of the house and just how big it is and how it anchors this corner but now it's on to the next rock or even the rock after that that we're yep. always thinking about. So what I was gonna say is we almost need something back up in here but how are we gonna transition? Will this be a little cove area or will we come out with a big chunk just coming straight back off of this edge? So well, thankfully this is easy to I mean at least it's a squared right, edge so flat. come down with something lower to a gravel bed and then get something taller behind it okay. or one of those big blocks so we decided against going with a low one and we're gonna go with a big block back there at least we're gonna see what it looks like look at that nice block of stone yeah it could be a little bit of a challenge 
A little bit heavy. All right, I am in a bad spot because I am on the side of the machine where he's lifting that rock. If it goes over, it's gonna pull right over to me. So from a safety standpoint, bad spot. You never wanna be stuck right over in here because if he lifts up, and it pulls the machine over. You can see a big machine, big rock. We're all on kind of backfill material right now, so you want to make sure that you're good and solid. But that thing is moving all over the place, and it's it's heavy. The rock is in. Second rock looks great. And the reason we didn't do that little lower one was because we knew that one would fit perfect. I mean, that's just a really, really, really nice sharp fit right in there. So instead of coming in there with that layer on the bottom and piecing it all together, we just decided to do one big chunk and it really works well. So now we could start coming in with smaller stuff back in there and we'll probably drop in another big one, probably way over in here, which is going to frame out our waterfall. Again, you know, just a big giant jigsaw puzzle, picking up all the pieces, piecing them together. I love the view of that from over here. It really works well. This is our fourth day out here from since the last year. And last year we put in three or four. Three or four, four days. days. Yep. Gosh, you would think us to be further along. <laughs> right? Like, you would think. Like, take two. <laughs> Just started. <laughs> For the two of us and, and Hayden, I'm happy with the progress. You guys banged a lot of stuff out yesterday. We got some more rocks set earlier this morning. We're going to start uh, buttoning up this edge. The main reason we want to do that is pretty soon we have to come in through here and get a lot of this dirt out. So we want to just get this finished. Probably even set in a couple boulders like we were talking about. Just so as those machines are moving back through here, it kind of gives them a, like, oh, if I hit this boulder, yeah. I should stop before I mess up everything. Yeah, else. last thing we want to do is destroy stuff. So when we do edges, I really like to do it as a team. One person trying to do the edge work from here all the way to there by themselves. <laughs> to be done, it just goes really slow, right? And so if we get the dingo going, some gravel over here, some extra dirt, I think the three of us will get this done in about 45 minutes to an hour. Yeah, I agree. And then from here, I think our next step is maybe set a couple of these bigger rocks in and around yeah, the waterfall Yeah, back area. up in that corner. So if we can get this edge done and a few rocks over there before uh, the end of today, like, yeah. I'm super happy. We're in good shape. Right. Edge is done. You can see kind of what we did here. We have all this extra fabric. So you want to either cut this back or make Make sure that is pushed down below the top of the liner and the reason that we do that is because the fabric will wick up moisture so if that fabric is coming over the liner and hitting the soil it's gonna suck water out of the pond actually pretty quickly underneath the liner we trim the fabric back we usually leave six to eight inches and we just kind of fold it that gives us a little flexibility to manipulate it if we need to coming in here packing soil in mixing in where you have soil coming directly to these big giant boulders. We have other areas with uh, cobblestones. We have some gravel, big gravel, little gravel, mixing up all those edge treatments, which is really what gives it that natural look. <laughs> no, <laughs> this is not what I wanted to wake up to. It's like a blizzard. It is middle of April. We have several inches of snow on the ground. Out walking the dog right now. Look at that like whiteout conditions. Brian and I are in the middle of a large recreation pond. This is gonna cause trouble for us. This is definitely, definitely gonna be a setback. I don't even wanna think about that project tomorrow. It is Sunday morning, last thing I wanna think about, but it's hard not to when you wake up to this. April in Chicago, at least the dog's happy.